I want to talk about some uh, props, using props at a, a game. It can be anything from a normal pickup game to like an actual event or, or just like a local field event. Um, I'll use an example. I'm making up a 50 caliber on a real steel tripod that we're going to use at a game in November. That's a long ways off. That's two months off. But I want to get it prepped and ready to go so that I can just take it, place it, bang, slam, Bob your uncle, we're done, and use it. But props can be simple. A uh, small bottle painted red with a nuclear symbol on it can be a bomb. Okay, and something as simple as a little push button on the top with a little battery and a little speaker or a little something that a light goes off or plays a sound or something like that. A big, what I saw was a big pretzel bottle, a plastic bottle or container, and they had painted it red, okay, and put yellow tape around it and they slapped a nuclear symbol on it. And all they had was a battery inside, a 9 volt battery, to a push button in the lid. They did everything on the lid with a button. All it had was a button and a light. Okay. And on the side of the uh, thing, it had a little speaker. And what happened was you hit the button, and like 15, 20 seconds goes by, and then it just makes a noise. It goes bang, bang, like that. And I said, that was awesome. So you, the whole object of the game was to take the, the bomb, place it in a spot, hit the button, and it goes off. And then the timer had a little pot you could adjust it, and it was in seconds. So it, there was um, 15, 30, 60 seconds. I, th I think it was 15, 30, 45, 60. The max was 60 seconds. So for a minute, you could let it sit there. And the irony is that if you turn the thing off, it was like off, that the bomb wouldn't go off. But if you hit the button again, then the timer would start all over again. That was awesome because let's just say blue team had the bomb, they planted it, hit the button, the guy from the red team comes in and all he does is like hit the button and the light goes out, it's disarmed. Then a blue team guy comes back, he looks, the light's not on, go over, press the button, light comes back on, it's armed again. Bang, slam. Now, granted, you had to have a ref watching it, uh, but the team members could see it because it had the little red light on the top, and that came up. And the guy originally had it with a 9-volt battery, and he actually put a rechargeable battery on it so that he could charge it or, or swap it out for a battery that he had, like a, an 8.4 or a 9.6 or, or whatever, so with Tamiya connectors, so that he could always have a battery for it and didn't have to worry about having a 9-volt battery all the time for that. So, he could, you know, if you, the battery was low, we could throw another type of battery on there. And it would take a voltage from, it said, 7-something or 8-something all the way up to 11-something. So you could put a 7.4 LiPo on it, you could put a, an 8.4 NIM, you could put a 9.6 on it, and, and even, I, I don't know about 11.1, .1. he did put 7.4s on it, and he did put an 8.4 and a 9.6 uh, NIMs, but that itself was awesome, because you, you anybody could have a battery around, bang, slam, throw it on, you're good to go. He also then eventually put it to a point where, you know, you had to flip a switch and be able to press the button. He made it a little harder. He added complexity to it by adding a switch, adding a button, you know, just so that like it took a little bit longer to get the bomb planted and then go from there. So that is a simplistic bomb idea. But you don't need to have like big, big electronic plans either. You could have something as simple, simple as that container painted that you just had to take to an area. Bang, slam. You can't throw it or anything like that. You have to physically place it. That's great. I found an old briefcase that there were sale they had at the uh, 
uh, dollar store, or not at the dollar store, the thrift store. I love going through there and finding old suitcases and old stuff like that that you could use as a prop. And this briefcase was a big leather, like heavy duty briefcase. And I thought, man, you could really do some cool stuff with that. Wire it up, make it a, like a, a bomb of some kind or anything like that, or just have it as a leather briefcase. It has the bomb in it. You got to take the briefcase and set it somewhere. Can't throw it, can't toss it, whatever. You have to physically place it because if you go too long with it, it goes off. Now, I did see one guy take that to the extreme. He had a thing filled with vinegar and he had baking soda in like a, a cup on the top. And you had to be careful as you were walking with it. You could, couldn't go too fast, you couldn't jostle it, or the baking soda would go into vinegar and then go up. We, it was messy, and we only used it a couple of times because you, you have somebody and they'd run and the thing would go off and I'm like, you're dead, the bomb went off. Okay, then you gotta wash it all out and put new vinegar in and put new uh, baking soda in and do it again. But it, it got to the point that these guys were walking with this. It's a bomb, Nit think about it like nitroglycerin. It's gonna go off and like if you jostle it too much, it goes off. And a lot of times, it never made it to where it had to go. But simple, simple props like that are, are, well, that's a little bit more complex, but simple props, anything can be a prop. Use it there. And someone said to me about an emplacement gun. Think about this. Almost everybody has a saw of some kind. If they don't, even an M4 with a box mag, okay? M4 with a box mag, the front pin, you find a bolt that fits in that, like a quarter 20 or something like that, a longer bolt, get a piece of pipe, six inch pipe, four inch pipe would probably be better, Cut a slot, put the, and then cut two holes, put that in there, bang slam, you have a, a, a carriage to mount your M4 to shoot it like an emplacement cut. Wouldn't take much. Piece of pipe, whatever. Get some wood, put the bolt through. Your big exp biggest expense is the bolt that fits there. So you take your pin uh, from your airsoft gun. Hopefully your pin comes out and it's not retained. Uh, and then you can make an emplacement gun. That's something simple that you can do, okay? Or I've seen a guy hang it from a, 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 a rope, tie it around the center of the gun, get the center, uh, you know, of the center of like mass of it, and hang the gun from a rope and use the gun back and forth. You can only use it as far as the rope would go. So you'd go to the side, go this back and forth. It was an interesting way to do an emplacement type gun. It was fun. Um, simple stuff like that. The more simple your props, the more simple like your devices that you're gonna use, the better are you better off you are. Um, multiple pieces of a prop too is a lot of fun. If you have and I I use an old laptop, an old radio an old circuit board and a, a, a chlorine like 10 pound barrel and it's four parts of the bomb with the radio and the circuit board with the circuit board oh it's a power supply circuit board radio I used to have a laptop but I don't anymore so I have the like it's the power supply, circuit board, radio, and the bomb itself. There's four parts. You need the circuit board, you need the power. But with the three out of the four, minus the radio, you can set it off and say it just detonates now. If you put the radio on it, you can go away from it and the ref, tell the ref, I want it to go off and in five minutes and the ref times it out, bang slam, it goes off in five minutes, unless somebody takes the bomb apart. And there are wires color-coded that you have to hook up 
on the circuit board to make it active, which means that if they don't have the wires hooked up, it's not active yet. That's a little bit more complicated, but it's non it's a non-functioning bomb. It doesn't have lights or anything like that, but it is like pieces that they have to go find. Plus, if they lose them or bang them or drop them or get them in the mud, it's not gonna hurt it any. That's another thing you wanna do too. When you have props, you wanna make sure that your props can take the abuse they're gonna get. You have a briefcase, don't go out and buy a hundred dollar briefcase and expect it to be nice. Because people will drop it, people will throw it, people will kick it, you know, it'll get smashed, whatever. Like if you're gonna buy a if you're gonna buy something expensive to use in a game, expect it to get broken, banged, smashed up, or whatever. So the more that your prop is least expensive, the better off because then your money you won't lose your money if something breaks you're not going to worry about it that's like that briefcase i bought i think i got it for two bucks that was awesome it's old and scuffed up already it's real heavy leather one so if they throw it around they bang it around they do whatever with it it's going to take the punishment but it's still going to be able to be used it's a lot of fun so it's important to be simplistic with your props and make them easy to use and anything can be used so that's my little rant about props you can make all kind of props and have a good time with them when you use them in a game